Thank you. Uh, my name is James Libby of Harrisville. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, as project architect for Thames Street Landing in Bristol, Rhode Island, I managed uh, redevelopment of a heavily contaminated waterfront site polluted by coal, arsenic, lead, and many other uh, contaminants. Uh, the project won a National Phoenix Award for its techniques used to revitalize that property. property. I'm currently working on a project that remediates an entire city block by removing and capping in place pollutants left by the uh, petroleum industry. These projects have been abandoned for years, some decades prior to redevelopment. Revitalization of these projects was only realized after additional commitments of public funding and other multiple tax credits. Uh, tonight, I wish to offer comments on the proposed decommissioning agreement uh, based on uh, my constituents asking me to do so, and also based on my experience dealing with industrial sites for the last 20 years and experience with large uh, construction contracts. Um, in particular, the decommissioning agreement section uh, 6F6B reads, in part, remediate any environmental concerns including site contaminants in accordance with current and applicable EPA and Rhode Island DEM regulations. Uh, that's fine for today, but this will be decommissioned 40 years from now. Uh, whatever they're es estimating today will be two, three, four times as much uh, in the future. When we talk about fiduciary responsibility, uh, this company should be obligated to uh, meet the costs of future um, decommissioning costs and stringent regulations as they apply at that time. Therefore, I would ask that the town council consider uh, as part of their fiduciary responsibility, adding certain language to the effect of uh, the scheduled five-year decommissioning report updates shall also reflect any and all future updates to EPA and Rhode Island DEM regulations applicable at the time of the revised report. Decommissioning remediation shall be designed and completed in accordance with the regulations applicable at the time of decommissioning. Uh, I've, I've eliminated a lot of this for uh, expediency sake. Um, section 7.A reads, in part, uh, the company shall provide financial assurance to the town in incrementally increasing amounts during construction and initial years of operation. Uh, the concern here is that the town will only have financial assurance in the amount of 50% decommissioning costs by the COD-1 date, which is the commercial operation date. So if an industrial accident should occur during the first year of operation and render the power plant inoperable or should the event cause the company to go bankrupt, uh, the financial insurance will absolutely be incomplete, 50% incomplete as a matter of fact, uh, to meet the decommissioning costs. Um, furthermore, a lot of developers will try to defer those costs because they'll build something uh, with the intention of selling it. And I think you talked about uh, that these uh, conditions would be transferable, but I don't see anything to that effect in the decommissioning portion of the agreement. I would ask that the town council, as part of their fiduciary responsibility, uh, consider changing the language to the following. The full cost of decommissioning shall be in place and secured by financial assurance prior to the commercial operation date. In the event of a sale, the decommissioning fund shall remain in full effect until a financially assured decommissioning fund is established by the purchaser. Uh, furthermore, section 7.B reads, financial assurance from a credit-worthy entity meeting the financial standards of the town may be in full form of a performance bond, a surety bond, a letter of credit, or escrow account. Uh, the risk here is that the town has left the means of financial assurance open to one of four financial instruments without stipulating any minimum, minimum sets of criteria for any of those financial instruments. This exposes the town to a number of potential risks. Access to dedicated decommissioning funds must be limited to prevent misuse of financial resources for unrelated activities. Disbursement from the fund should only be allowed for decommissioning related expenses and not operating costs or waste disposal during operation or any other costs. Uh, as part of the town council's fiduciary responsibility, I would ask that you consider adding languages that establishes a minimum set of standards requirements for 
optional methods of financial assurance. For example, in the case of a letter of credit, they should say, to the extent that the company chooses to provide a letter of credit as proof of the financial assurance, then the following parameters should apply minimally. The beneficiary. The beneficiary must be identified as the town of birth. Right now, you don't have that as a condition. Duration. The letter of credit shall automatically renew on an annual basis without notice or amendment and without maximum number of re renewals. You don't have that as a condition right now. Issuer. The issuer of the letter of credit must be a United States chartered or incorporated bank that is acceptable to the town of Burrow. I've worked with very large developers before who have the financial resources to do their own financial assurance. That's not the condition you want to be exposed to, and right now we can be. Access to funds. The full amount of the letter of credit must be payable within two days to the beneficiary on demand of the letter of credit at the bank's main branch in the city of Providence, Boston, New York. Right now, it could be anywhere in the world, quite literally. Notification. The beneficiary must be notified by the issuer by way of a courier or registered mail to the attention of the town of Burrowville at least 90 days before the letter of credit may be canceled, not renewed, or expires. Upon notification, the beneficiary shall be entitled to withdraw the entire amount of the letter of credit. Additional terms that you may want to consider. The letter of credit must be irrevocable, non-transferable, and non-assignable. These are some basic, basic fiduciary responsibilities just for the letter of credit. You've got four options that are available to the developer. I would ask that as part of the town's fiduciary responsibility, that the town should negotiate with the agreement that, that the agreement contains similar parameters for the performance bond, surety bond, and escrow accounts. Section 7.F reads, if the actual cost of the decommissioning and restoration of the project exceeds the financial assurance amounts, the company shall be responsible for any difference. The obvious risk here is that the company declaring bankruptcy and thus avoiding financial commitments, including the possibility of not completing the decommissioning, thus leaving the town with a substantial financial liability. I would ask that as part of the town's financial uh, fiduciary responsibility, they consider adding something to the effect of, as part of their property insurance policies, the company shall be required to carry decommissioning liability insurance coverage for any shortfall in the company's decommissioning fund, including, but not limited to, if the plan is damaged, decommissioned earlier than expected, or in the event of bankruptcy. The amount of the exceeding costs shall be calculated as the difference between one, the amounts of the decommissioning fund at the time the plan is closed or abandoned, and two, the amounts it will cost to decommission the plan. Last one for tonight, I promise. Uh, section four reads, if the project or portion thereof ceases to operate or is not in a ready state of operation for 24 consecutive months, then the project or that portion of the project shall be considered abandoned unless the project has commenced the decommissioning process. Again, the risk here is trying to prevent a closed power plant from, stand, for, from standing unused, vacant, and visually blighted to our community for a long period of time. I would ask that the town consider adding language to the effect of the company shall notify the town three years prior to the closure. During the three years prior to closure, the company shall finalize decommissioning planning, including but not limited to engineering plans, landscape architecture plans, permitting approvals, and bidding of the work to contractors. Decommissioning demolition and restoration shall be completed as soon as practic practical, but not later than 24 months from the power plant closure, abandonment, or irreparable damage. The town will only approve an extension of the 24 months deadline under extenuating circumstances such as regulatory requirements from other agencies, lawsuits, monitored natural groundwater, or other events that could prolong that process. What I'm trying to make as a point here tonight is that the current decommissioning agreement is essentially incomplete. Uh, I agree that a tax agreement must be put in place, obviously, but not now, absolutely not now, not with these conditions. Clearly there is substantial work to do in improving these agreements to protect our town as part of your fiduciary responsibility. With a three-month suspension, I, can see no, I cannot see the urgency 
in approving these agreements tonight, and I respectfully request that you not approve it tonight. Thank you.